Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, everyone, and welcome back to another thrilling episode of Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. I am your host today, Pumai Weigert, and I am joined today by De La Mesa. This is Brian and Natalie. <laughs> yes, and they are, uh, they are farmers, they are in food, they are in law. <laughs> <laughs> so I have invited, I'm so happy to have them here today uh, to talk about what they're doing. Uh, surprise, surprise, they're also go farmers. <laughs> so here we are, here we are again. And uh, they do something really, really interesting and different. I'm always, I'm always, you know, pounding the pavement looking uh, for different lifestyles, different themes in food and farming. And uh, they do something called urban farming. They do salsa, they do farmer's markets, they do a whole bunch of different stuff. So we're just gonna, um, gonna turn it over to them and have them introduce themselves. And if you could uh, just tell us sort of how you got into farming. Yeah, cool. So I'm, I'm Brian, and mm -hmm. owner of De La Mesa LLC. Um, so how I got into farming actually was my passion for food and salsa. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't able to find really good produce that was read readily available mm -hmm. for me. So I kind of started growing it in my backyard, and then it like snowballed from there. <laughs> with, yeah. Uh, I think Natalie said uh, it better. She said there was no good Mexican food here, yeah. and we had to really, and we are grateful that you saw a need <laughs> to fill that demand. Yeah. Um, so salsa, sorry, I just had to make no, sure it's, I... it's <laughs> true. I mean, we, you would get canned salsa. Like, I, you could taste the canned tomatoes in a lot of salsa. Yeah, right. locally. So it's like, okay. Definitely. Okay, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is what you were saying. Like, okay, no, I'm not into that. Yeah. Um, and that is that because were you guys somewhere before you came to Hawaii? Oh yeah, I grew up in California. So did I. Um, so okay. good Mexican food is <laughs> always available. It, it was definitely something I had been missing. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then yeah, when I got into the stores and wasn't able to find like you know pasilla chilies or guajillos or arbol chilies, I was just like shocked. And, like, and you were like, let's grow them. <laughs> I, know, I know how to grow it, so <laughs> might as well, right? You're like, okay, <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, and then what made the shift from California to Hawaii? Uh, well, you moved here first. You've been yeah, here it was different years? for both of us. I've been here like almost 10 years now. Oh, okay. um, I came out here for law school. Oh, well. Um, and just never never went back home mm -hmm. to L.A. Um, fell in love with it here and stayed. It happens. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it does. Um, and then I met this guy here too, and he was a transplant. Oh, we met so here. you guys met yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, I didn't see that. I didn't. See that. I love being able to delve into like the Go Farm profiles, you know, <laughs> because you're like, oh, okay, so you guys met here, um, and farming. You were farming already, or no? Actually, I was uh, landscaping at okay. the time. Yeah, I was uh, owning a landscape company out in Kailua uh, mm. for. Uh, what was it like the last two years last three yeah. years before yeah. oh. i made the transition to get into farming mm -hmm. once i i figured out that like all of our produce is shipped in and mm -hmm. a majority of it has been sitting on a boat for the last two weeks before it gets into the store mm -hmm. and then yeah not having you know the mexican ingredients that i'd so long to have <laughs> <laughs> that you yearned for yeah. <laughs> that you were dreaming of every night yeah. um and then did you folks so i know that you have an urban farm in kailua Correct. which we're going to touch on but did you farm somewhere else before then? I actually did. Um, so I started off in Waianae over on the west side. Um, I found a little plot okay. yeah, that uh, a buddy of mine allowed me to blow up his backyard with a ton of peppers. <laughs> and I, I did it at the wrong time of year. It's oh, like didn't you know, work out, huh? No, no. It's, it's hot during the summer over there, mm -hmm. and here I am, mm -hmm. you know, growing in California, coming from over there, saying you can grow this. At year round here, and it's like winter time. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah so, so that one didn't work out. Didn't that one work didn't work out. out. But Lots then, of lessons learned. Yes, <laughs> yes. No, but I feel like that's a, you know, um, like we were talking about before. Like if you've never failed forward, mm -hmm. then 
um, there, there's going to be that in agriculture. There is going to be <laughs> that. There's going to be some very crushing moments. So glad you guys survived. Yeah. Yep. So why and I, and then you went to. And then uh, we ended up getting a house in Kailua and okay. just went from there. I was like, what is the quickest way I can, you know, turn over produce? And I started mm -hmm. doing research and I got into microgreens and I started mm -hmm turning over microgreens and I started off with one or two trays a week and then now I've evolved to about 65, 70 trays a week in our backyard. Aquaponic wow. systems, grow beds, like everything. Potted <laughs> plants, yeah, yeah cool. everywhere. So super neat yeah. farm tour status. I, well, like see, you know, like I would have to come visit <laughs> yeah. your guys, yeah. see the operation. Um, can you tell us what urban farming is? I had this question earlier, so <laughs> I was like, wait, we're gonna come back to that because I feel like we should tell all the world. Yeah. So um, I know that there are a couple of different urban farms that actually are farming in like uh, containers, like shipping containers okay. as well. Um, so that's considered urban farming in like a city area, or mm -hmm. we're farming in a neighborhood, so it's not zoned as agricultural land. So okay. it's like backyard, all of our neighbors are around. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, so it's kind of like in, <clears throat> it's not your traditional sprawling. Oh no, not acres, sprawling. <laughs> yeah, sprawled out, 100 foot rows, you mm -hmm. know. Okay. Bed. Um, so microgreens, what else do you guys grow? Uh, currently, we have taro in one oh. of our beds back there. We're growing cassava, we have bananas, and... Um, <clears throat> and then you else? have the stuff at, at the Go Farm. Oh, yeah. right, too, right, because yeah. you, so. you know, the little backyard urban wasn't enough. You're like, no, yeah. we need more things. So. so Go Farm, you guys are growing. This is you right here. This oh, is yeah. amazing. Chantel. Some yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Photography. yeah. Um, amazing. This is just gonna, this is great. Um, and is this your guys' plot? Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this is. So you're cabbage. just cruising in someone else's. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I like this. Let's, let's, let's name yeah. drop them and be like, oh, thank you for letting us walk through your field. <laughs> yeah. He's very proud of that cabbage in the foreground. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're like, actually, really make sure that you get these cabbages. That's great. So you're growing cabbage. Mm, yeah, among other things, peppers and squash blossoms currently, edible flowers, salad wow. mixes, bok choys. And, and did you feel like um, it was hard for you to find a market or like did you already have people you knew you wanted to sell to? Are you, were you targeting Mexican restaurants? What was your, like what was your strategy when you're like, hey, I'm gonna grow microgreens and then cabbage and flowers that were like, what was your thinking? What was your vision with that? So a lot of things kind of evolved, but initially I did know that I wanted to go into farmer's markets okay. and I wanted to start off that way. I've always loved being in farmer's markets and when I came to Hawaii, uh, there was no um, farms at these farmer's markets. It was all like food vendors and I'm thinking in my own mind, like this isn't a farmer's market without farmers. <laughs> I feel farmers. weird. Yeah. yeah, so I wanted to do that and I wanted to have a niche there too mm -hmm. as well because there was other things I didn't see, like, you know, fennel and just different types of herbs and how I keep going on about peppers and other things like that as well. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so I really wanted to bring that to market and have that kind of stuff available to people as well because mm -hmm. I know I couldn't be the only one that was missing out on some of this. And did you or do you <laughs> feel like um, the demand for those types of items has grown or do you see, because what uh, what farmer's markets are you going to now? Or like where, yeah, where, where So I do... Um, Kaka'ako on Saturdays, okay. and then uh, uh, right outside on Ward. Okay. That one. Right, and then we do Kailua on Sundays. Yeah. Um, oh, that's okay. at the elementary school oh. there. So, and there's never really been an issue with selling the produce. I mean, it's I can't grow enough of it. It's a problem. So that's why we've been able to move out of the urban farm and get into Go Farm, which is an amazing program. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I heard, that's what I heard. Experience. The word on the street, the word on the street yeah. is that they're they're making some moves, they're making some moves. I don't know if you're things. giving yourself enough credit though, because I think there was some, edu you know, we had to educate the market a little yeah, bit. Like totally. when we first came out with microgreens, it was like, mm -mm. When, what, what, what year was it? this? This um, was April? Of last year. Of last year. Yeah. Um, what year was this? April? Yeah, okay. Okay, so um, several months ago. Okay, okay, yeah, but yeah. still. Yeah, still. Yeah. I mean, Especially to the, the consumer market because yeah. restaurant market, their, you know, food scene, I think, on the restaurant market scale, very different. Yes. Very, and it's, it's Hawaii is already fairly diversified in that area, so, you know, they're, 
we do have a lot of progressive chefs. So in that arena, microgreens, I think, are a little bit, and edible flowers and all of those kinds of things. But like as a consumer, um, I would imagine that some education needed to be. Um, what do you think has been, uh, like what have you had to educate them on, do you feel like? Oh, just like what, what it is. is. <laughs> <laughs> how, how it's grown, yes. it's grown at a week, and you know, it's a mm -hmm. cotyledon, it's not you know, the mm -hmm. full true leaf. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Yeah, it's like at the, and he's taught me a lot too, because I kind of knew the business side, but none of the farming oh, stuff. Yeah. Um, but you know, like at the farmer's markets, we have just a tray, like one of the 10 by 20 trays oh, yeah. that we grow the greens in, and it's just right. sitting out there, and that captures people, yeah, people's attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're like, what is that? Because it's like fluffy and green. <laughs> right, they're just yeah. naturally drawn to it. Yeah. But I also feel like that's an important component to, to education is that, um, you know, especially now and especially around food is, it's not really black and white. It is like people just seeing things and then like wanting to touch it or mm -hmm. it's green mm -hmm. and wanting to know like, what is this? Or uh, they want to taste something. Oh, look, there you are. <laughs> There you are, so teaching people. Microgreens down there, <laughs> off to the right. Next and to are these all things you guys make? Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's uh, kohlrabi and tomatoes, fennel, and then me pointing at some of the salsas we're making there. Is Are those peppers or tomatoes? What those are, are tomatoes. Those are tomatoes yeah. that you grew? Yeah, this is a, a hybrid variety, a Merlot variety from UH. So that, oh. they got, that has resistance to tomato yellow leaf curl. <laughs> cool. Good. Um. So in your farmer's market experience, uh, what do you think is one of your best selling items or what is like, what is like the microgreens? Definitely really? the microgreens. Yeah. I can't, yeah. yeah, I can't go And the, the green salsa verde. Okay. We call the it verde, verde fresca. <laughs> <laughs> and then boom. Yeah. And yeah. then no, boom. And our yeah. value added products from the yeah. farm. That's great. Uh, let's talk a little bit about value add. So I know that you folks make salsa and is that where, uh, how come salsa, uh, and then recipes like where where did the inspiration for salsa come i know you said that you've had salsa all your life but right but right. why was that what direction you decided to go oh uh, uh, well i'm mexican so <laughs> I, Easy. i'm used to really boom, really boom. good i like mexican. i like this i this is i i live for these moments i try to set them up but then i don't know i don't know when my guest is gonna be able to like boom like really hit it out of the park so thank you. Okay, so there's that. Yeah. Um, mm -mm. And I was I was really missing some good salsa, some yeah. you know like menudo Mexican food or homemade tortillas and stuff like that. And did you like make these things growing up, or you oh, just yeah. always okay? Oh yeah, since yeah since I was like five or six years old, and grandma sitting there telling me I'm not gonna cook for you. You need to make eggs and mm -hmm. do all this stuff. Kind of yourself. like Hawaiians with poi, I yeah. think. You know, like it's just something mm -hmm. that. It's like a comfort, mm -hmm. you know, and then you like also know what is like good and then what is not good. Right, and right. so I could see how um, one would yearn for such a thing. <laughs> and, and there is similarities to that too, because like I make handmade salsa, so I have to like pound the onion and the tomatoes and the garlic. Right, and like put all. heart and soul <laughs> and magic yeah. into your <laughs> into your <laughs> salsas. That's great. And then recipes, did you? <clears throat> come up with them on your own or? Yeah, so I find a lot of inspiration in, in a lot of different places actually. I find inspiration on my farm and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, this is readily available or this is readily available. I can whip this up into something. Um, or I go to market and I, like I just got some um, jicama from counterculture and I threw some of the jicama <laughs> no, together. No, sorry, that eye roll was like for them, like in a good way. No, was like, I just feel like uh, they also taught me about jicama because yeah. I did a farm tour there. That's amazing. And he was like, jicama, and I'm like, jicama, mm -mm. you know, what is, what is jicama, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And then he just, you know, he's like, this is what it is. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, awesome. And he's like, here. <laughs> like, thanks. Thank you so much, counterculture. And then I had to take it home. And I was like, anybody? No, anybody? No? Sense. Like, that's cool. Yeah. OK, we're going to take a really quick break. Cool. Um, and then we're going to come back with more De La Mesa uh, in a little bit.
we are back, Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I'm Pomai, and I'm here with the owners of De La Mesa LLC, which is a farm store, a farm? Well, it's like farm. a farm. Urban that, farm. Urban farm yeah. that also sells value-added stuff. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, salsas. Uh, so we've just been talking pickles. Talk pickles. Yeah, pickles. We, we can talk about pickles. Yeah. We do a lot. Pickled peppers, pickled red onion, like the stuff that you want to put on tacos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. This is just opening up my mind. <laughs> like, well, and this, you know, really, I'm kind of like going around, you know, especially for. Um, Again, now that I'm with Go Farm, I, I you know I can kind of get a gauge of like what people are making, and um, we have so many people making so many different neat things. Um, but then I always love to delve into, but why, and where, and how, and what they're doing with it. Um, so when we look at kind of what you folks have been doing. Uh, what what do you feel like your future looks like in farming and in food and like uh, what's your vision for that? Uh, both. So definitely, I plan to scale up this summer. Scaling uh, up uh, with a lot of a lot of corn, um, corn. dried varieties. I want to do masa and start uh, doing some pop ups for some farm to table Mexican food. So everything that's from my farm will go ahead and try to make some Mexican food with it, see what I'm feeling. Wow, that's going to be super cool. I feel like, um, oh, look, we have some salsa. Yeah. Oh, and you can, so people can order on Instagram? Yeah. Or is that an old you, thing? Well, we did that for Super Bowl. Oh, uh, like pre-orders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's but, something special, so if it's yeah. something special. But they can always shoot us an email and mm -hmm. if they have a request for like a party or something like that, and we can do like a sample. Oh, that's super sampling. cool. Um, how uh, did... Was there a lot of demand for Super Bowl? Oh yeah, I, I think we sold out in like yeah. an hour, <laughs> yeah. if not less. And I, I probably made double the amount. Come, come down here quick because it's ridiculous. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, Super Bowl, it's a right. it's a good time to uh, generate revenue. Um, all right, so any other uh, you're gonna do farm to table? Uh, are you thinking about partnering up with anyone, or are you? Is that something that you folks are gonna? Do on your own. Uh, do on our own. I mean, yeah, we'll definitely collaborate with different people yeah. when available, mm -hmm. different farmers, um, mm -hmm. whatever they have available at the right, time. Right, right, right. So know. sourcing things from yeah. other people. Yeah, for definitely. The you know, even like you know, Pono Pork and other people uh -huh. like that as well, or Two Lady Farms uh -huh. who, who are doing um, pork over there. Oh, I love yeah. pork. Yeah. I mean, like anytime, like, is it a pork dish? Because then I'm totally into it. Totally into it. Um, and then Forage as well, who has like the uh, yes. antelope. Totally love them too. And she, oh. uh, and she loves you guys. She uses She's you awesome. in like all of her cooking um, IG stories. And then I'm like, oh my God, these are goat farmers. And she's like, I know. So I, I just think that, you know, it's. Um, there's so much opportunity for collaboration, and I feel like so many people in food and farming are, it's like, e not easy, but it's happening, you I know? Think, I think it's like a must, you have to yeah. in Hawaii. I mean, Thank there's you. you don't have that many resources available, so you gotta come to the people that are doing it too. You gotta come to your neighbors and other farmers or people at the booth and, yeah. and farmers markets and see mm -hmm. what they're doing and partner up. Um, Let's talk about farmers market scenes a little bit. Uh, are there any sort of trends or shifts um, that you folks have seen since you've been there in people who are attending, what they buy, um, who's there? Uh, so tell me some of the insights that you get from being at the farmers market. Um, I mean, like that? the thing that I probably love the most and that was unexpected for uh -huh. me was the collaboration in the community amongst the different farmers nice. and the farming booth. Nice. You know, the, the you. booths like, um, you know, we met we met the forage and um, you know mm -hmm. counterculture and all these all these other farmers all and they're all interested in what you're doing and they're like, hey, can I get this from you and you right. barter and you exchange and it, mm -hmm. it's that that part has been really really cool. Mm -hmm. um, for me, at least, yeah, the community. Yeah, and I, I feel like it really is a, it really is a lifestyle. You know, I, I feel like that is what people are looking, looking for, and, and even, a lot of people that that we work with or that I work with. I mean, they're looking for sort of that hybrid life. You know, they want really good paying jobs, 
and then they don't want to be stuck in an office all the time. They want to have wide open space. They want to have fresh food. They want to have that for their children too. Um, so you guys have a children. You have a child. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a one year old. One year old. Sometimes it feels like more though. <laughs> no, he's really just one <laughs> one child. <laughs> and um, how does he like farm life? Uh, yeah, that kid is amazing. Like he's taking him to the farm and he's like chomping on a tomato and he's like, it's, <laughs> we just love love having him learn mm-hmm. how to eat just fresh. Well, I get in trouble fresh. for bringing home a dirty baby sometimes. Oh, you're like, than, oh, yeah. look at her. <laughs> like, look at her very you dirty. Took her to the farm, didn't he's just, you? Like, covered in mud. He <laughs> ate oh. dirt, didn't he? <laughs> looks, like he looks like he was eating some dirt. Uh, looks like he was in the earth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that's, it. That's awesome. One and just again um seeing more families involved in farming i feel like that's uh, i don't know makes me feel hopeful you know that or i could see how um so many families want that for their children to like be outside and and sort of to express in um in that way do you folks plan to expand um the the kind of farming that you're doing, or um, more, produce more? What are you thinking as far as expansion for, for Yeah, your definitely. Definitely want to expand to a couple acres, but then also you know, involve the community and educate the community as well. Um, I'm having some kids from the Waimanalo Health Center come down and tour the farm and okay. teach them that you know, food this doesn't come from the supermarket. It's actually grown. What? <laughs> yeah. What? And there's like people who grow it? Right, oh right. my God, there's, I heard about that. It's crazy. There's this lack of education that I'm finding too here where mm-hmm. um, people don't realize um, how, you know, how, how, um, <clears throat> How food is grown. Yeah, how food is grown and how hard it is to grow And I think, like, also interfacing with who grows it. You know what I mean? Because it's like, okay, you know that the farms exist. I mean, it's a farm, that idea of farming has has become popular. You know, but I, I feel like really interfacing and, like you said, seeing farmers and actually seeing a farm. Like, I... I don't know, because I came, my background before this was tourism, like, I don't know that I could just go back to just that. Like, Mm -hmm. I need, I need wide open space. I need fresh food. I need dirty sometimes, you know what I mean? To just sort of appreciate uh, everything that we have here. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about this variety showcase. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Right. Um, and this variety showcase is coming up March 13th. 13th. March 13th. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? We're all involved, yeah. but you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it's going to be a lot of local farmers and some mainland farmers as well, and they're all going to be showcasing what they've been working on for the last year. So all their hybrids um, mm-hmm. they'll be releasing, and we're also teaming up with uh, some chefs to do some uh, poo poo style. Uh, farm to table uh, event, kind of. Uh, so there will be, uh, I know, who, who's going to be there? Pig and the Lady. Pig and the Lady. Town, Fat. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's going to be a great opportunity <clears throat> if you're a foodie to get a little bit more behind the scenes of the farming. Right. Because, like, you already know the food, like, the food stuff, but how do they get what they, yes. you know, use, mm. and how are they inspired? I completely agree. <laughs> it's a very, especially if you're you're a foodie and you've been in the food scene, and and I feel like if you're a foodie and you have been in the food scene, you've seen a lot of culinary art. You've already seen a lot of um, of that, but I I feel like with this event. You get to see the farm art too, mm-hmm. yeah. Because it's really a lot of farm artisans in a way. Like they have created these magic varieties. Mm-hmm. Um, so Jay, yeah, Bost, Bost, Jay, Jay Bost, Bost mm-hmm. uh, who's a part of Go Farm. <laughs> uh, he man. he is such a farm nerd. I love it. I love to just <laughs> hang out. Too. No, yeah. but all of our Go Farmers are we like make farm nerds. <laughs> So I love it because then, then you know, even today uh, we were at Ag at the Capitol, 
and uh, Shayna was yeah. there, okay. and we were there was somebody dressed up like a cockroach, uh, you know, <laughs> like to engage with the people, and you know, me and someone else were like, oh, there's a cockroach costume here, and she was like, oh no, it's like blah 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 blah, blah beetle, <laughs> we're like, thank you for the scientific. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so you know, as you can see, as you can see, we really need the interfacing. <laughs> so um, I feel like variety show is gonna be. It's going to be something like that because there's so many neat varieties of, I don't know, like tomatoes, sugar cane. I think they're having like wing beans there wing and different beans. kinds of... Uh, uh, Things that you want to Google. Yeah. And then cool chefs from like all of Oahu's popular restaurants. It's going to be super hype. I'm yeah. like... And, and it's really inexpensive. It it's like is. $25. $25. It's like... like yeah. Kohana Rum is going to be there. Kohana Rum Beer Lab, Beer Lab is going to gonna be, be there. there. So are you? I will be a chef there. Actually. Oh, you're chefing. Yeah. So I'll you're have chefing. a What are you chefing? <laughs> on, well, I think it's going to be a salsa. I'm not sure yet. I haven't gotten the ingredients, so I don't know where my mind's going to take it. Mm -hmm. I'm still waiting. But on it's it. supposed to be what? A new variety of a habanero or something? Yeah, it's a cross yeah. between like a new Mexican yeah, yeah, yeah. chili pepper. Right, because like that's sweet, the whole thing is like spicy. farm innovation right. or like growing innovation. So, I mean, and it started in Portland, which I mean, they've obviously been like leaders in this kind of thing. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, but I'm really super excited about it. I, I think that. In Hawaii, we're we're progressing uh, in a way in a way like that. I'm uh, I'm so grateful that you folks came to join me yeah, for this for little quickie <laughs> talk story session. Um, if you would like to find De La Mesa, they are at uh, where are you guys at? Uh, De La Mesa Hawaii .com, mm -hmm. or you can find us at Farmers Market on Saturday in Kakako, or on Sunday Kailua. Daily and then Mentor. their Instagram is De La Mesa Hoy. Yep. 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 So go check them out on their IG. Go to the farmer's market. See you at the variety show. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.